Where was the money? In this video, we're going to study the relative dating. The learning competency here is to describe the different methods of determining the age of stratified rocks. In the previous video, we have learned how rock layers are formed. Understanding this fundamental concept in stratigraphy is essential in understanding and applying the different techniques to be discussed in this video. So first, let's describe some vocabulary words. We have relative dating, absolute dating, and unconformity. When we say relative dating, basically it is the science of determining the age of an object in comparison to another without necessarily determining their estimated age. Okay, so again, without determining their estimated age. Let me actually write this down. Absolute dating is the process of determining an age on a specified chronology and archaeology and geology, which we will study in the next video. Lastly, we have unconformity. Simply, this is a break in time in an otherwise continuous rock record. In earth science, there are different methods and principles that are used to determine the relative ages of rocks. We have the principle of original horizontality, Law of superposition, principle of lateral continuity, principle of cross-cutting relationship, and principle of unconformity. Now, under the principle of unconformity, we have four unconformities. We have angular unconformity, nonconformity, disconformity, and paraconformity. Are you ready for it? Principle of horizontality is best described by this figure. So remember, when sediments are deposited, they form essentially horizontal or flat layers as shown in this figure. This is what we call original horizontal strata. This principle basically states that tilted sedimentary rocks were originally horizontal and that they must have been subjected to rock deformation such as folding. Now we have another video for that. So if you're not familiar with folding or faults, you may go to that. Thank you, you! Next we have the law of superposition. This figure implies that new rock layers are always deposited on top of existing rock layers. Meaning, deeper layers must be older than those closer to the surface. This law states that within a sequence of layers of sedimentary rock, the oldest layer is at the base and the younger or the youngest layer is in the top. Okay. Next, we have the principle of lateral continuity. This principle states that rock layers extend laterally as long as there is sufficient supply of sediments. In simple words, Layers of sediments initially extend laterally in all directions. So as a result, rocks that are otherwise similar but are now separated by a valley or other erosional feature can be assumed to be originally continuous. For example, let's say a geologist has been studying the distribution of rocks and they encounter the same rock type on the opposite side of the river like this. Okay, so this is distribution of rock A and distribution of rock B. So upon applying the principle of lateral continuity, the geologist can conclude that this rocks previously formed a continuous layer and that the part of original layer of rock must have been eroded by the river. Because again, look, this one, they are very similar, right? Similar. Another requirement is that they are separated by a valley. So by applying this principle, we can conclude that they are initially continuous. This is the panorama of the Grand Canyon from the Stout Rim. So if you notice, 
Layers of the same rock type are found across canyons at the Grand Canyon. So take note of the white layer on the top that is continuous throughout despite the presence of gaps in between. So this is a real life scenario of this principle. Next, we have the principle of cross-cutting relationship. This principle states that a layer or stratum must always be older than any feature that cuts or disrupts it. So for example, if a layer is cut by a fault, the layer is older than the fault that cuts across it. A profound silence has entered the chat. Okay, now let's have an example. Let's try this figure. F is a fault that cuts through layer C and igneous rock D. Okay. Therefore, F is younger than C and B. Now, rock D is a dike that cuts across all the other rocks. It is therefore younger than the other rocks. Okay, younger. Now, if you look closely, Rock E is younger than Rock D because Rock D was not able to cut through Rock E. Okay, again. E was then deposited after the intrusion of Rock D. Now, Fault F, on the other hand, is the youngest of all because it was able to cut through Rock E. So F here if you notice here so f is the youngest however e was eroded out on the other side of the fault block so if you notice there is this structure here very easy right hell no 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 now let's have the principle of unconformity again we have four kinds here Angular unconformity, nonconformity, disconformity, and paraconformity. But what is unconformity? An unconformity is a surface of non deposition or erosion. Okay, so accumulation of sediments continues until the supply of sediments is cut off or if the area is subject to uplift and erosion. Now, uplift to the surface, meaning bottom of the ocean to the surface exposes rocks to the agents of weathering and erosion and when these two happens unconformity cannot occur so, because again unconformity is a surface of non-deposition or erosion now let's talk about angular nonconformity. so this figure illustrates the sequence of events that can lead to the formation of an angular unconformity or nonconformity. The horizontally layered sedimentary unit on top is separated from the underlying folded rocks by an unconformity. So meaning, rocks above are younger than the rocks below. In figure A, sediments are initially deposited as horizontal layers. In figure B, the resulting rock layers are then subjected to folding, which is often associated with uplift. C is the exposure of the folded rock layers to the surface which results to erosion. Finally, the folded and eroded rocks undergo subsidence allowing the resumption of deposition. My brain has completely turned to mush. So what you have to remember is that the unconformity represents a period of erosion. So basically, attitude of beds above and below the surface of erosion or unconformity are not the same or the beds are not parallel to each other this slide shows the evolution of an angular unconformity okay so deposition to deformation to erosion and followed by renewed deposition okay now let's talk about nonconformity a nonconformity is the contact that separates the younger sedimentary rock unit from an igneous intrusive rock or metamorphic rock here, you have to remember that the layer below the erosional surface is either a metamorphic rock or an igneous rock, and the layer above the erosional surface is a sedimentary rock. A nonconformity suggests 
that a period of long-term uplift, weathering, and erosion occurred to expose the older, deeper rock at the surface before it was finally buried by the younger rocks above it. So basically, a nonconformity is the old erosional surface on the underlying rock. Now the question is, why do igneous rocks or metamorphic rocks usually separated by an erosional surface? Mm, I know a lot of things, but I don't know about that. I'm not sure why. So this slide shows another diagram of a nonconformity. So if you notice, photonic rocks and metamorphic rocks form below the surface of the earth. So here. And if you remember, some igneous rocks, they reach the surface. That's why we have it here. On the other hand, sedimentary rocks form at the surface. So this means that the platonic rocks or metamorphic rocks will have to be uplifted and therefore subject to erosion before the deposition of the sedimentary rocks. So the question is, is it possible for platonic igneous rock or metamorphic rock to be overlain by sedimentary rock without an erosional surface? Well, I don't know, darling. What do you think? <laughs> okay, think. The answer is yes. If and only if the contact between the two is a fault. Remember that. I feel like I need to take notes or something. Like, let me get my whiteboard out and just start writing this shit down. Okay, so this is another diagram for unconformity. Now let's talk about this conformity and paraconformity. This conformity, sedimentary rock strata above and below the surface of erosion, exists where the layers above and below an erosional boundary have the same orientation. Keyword, same orientation. On the other hand, in paraconformity, the strata or beds are parallel to each other. Parallel. And there is no discernible erosional surface. However, there is a gap in the ages between the rock units. So remember, a paraconformity represents a period of non-deposition. This slide summarizes the four unconformities. Okay, you will notice the differences between those. You will never see my face again. Goodbye. F you guys. <laughs>